From the time Stony Brook became a notion as a unique expression of the gospel, um, we've been in a pursuit together of discovering what that would look like. Um, we are really uh, just the next expression in a long line of, of church families who have reproduced and planted other churches. We're a part of a, a conference, we're a part of a district, we're, um, we're the product of God working powerfully through the gospel and by His Spirit and through community in ways that was producing growth. Uh, in some cases, that was just a heart to grow and reach people through His people. Uh, that began in the prayers of people who were in rural communities or in small churches who were looking beyond at what would it look like for, for the gospel to be increased. Uh, more specifically, um, we're in the family tree of a church that, uh, where God was working powerfully and they were growing and overflowing and they spilled into this building and, and this building and the church family that was meeting here was an extension of a ministry but God had plans that this would become a unique freestanding expression of the gospel that would draw upon all that collective love, the collective gospel, and become something that was all at once sane and new. And now for us, we're uh, on a morning like this where we're four years in and we're looking at the, the church in Acts and asking what are the dots that connect between them and us? What's the DNA that we share? What are the things that are common that we can draw upon? And in the same way, um, based on what we learned from that, how is God calling us into a unique expression? Beyond that, we see though that as the church has grown, those healthy environments where God's active and where people are really pursuing, that produces the longing to reproduce. And here we are now, able to enjoy everything that God is doing here. And in midstream as we're growing, as we're figuring out what's next, God has already called and raised up a planter and a vision for another community so that out of our community, we can be a part of reproduction. I'm Wes Wilmer, and with my wife, Michelle, and my daughter, Kalea, we're joining God in the adventure of planting this new church in Fremont called Sanctuary. One of the things I think that is a tension for us is there's a, there's a fear in what it's going to cost us to plant a church, whether it be money or it be people. And I, I really identify, I think more than anything at the moment in terms of where we're at and what we've stepped into is Peter when he's in the boat during a storm with the other disciples. And there's this fear that overcomes them. And this fear overcomes them because they see what they think is a ghost coming out walking on the water. And, the, and they're wondering who this ghost is and they're, they're afraid. And then, they, and then Peter gets up and speaks up and says, after Jesus says, do not fear, he says, Peter says to them, um, says to him, Jesus, if it's you, Lord, if it's you, would you tell me to step out of the boat? And I think that's the thing that's scary is we're called to multiply and it, it, there's always this fear because it's going to cost us something. For me to step into sanctuary in Fremont, has it, it required me to step out of a job that I have and a secure, certain sense of security in that. It required for us to, to better do it, to move out of our house and into our, a new home that seemed to suit our needs better for ministry that we could entertain and have people in our house and meet here. That there's always a cost and it's really scary. But there's also should be in us this great anticipation of joining Jesus in what he's doing. And I think Peter balanced those two things, probably had the same fear that his other disciples had, but yet he is the one that had the courage to step out of the boat. And even though he fell, it was still Jesus picking him up and in the whole story saying, Jesus is gonna do what he does anyway. And we get the joy of stumbling into it and figuring it out as we go and seeing God do this wonderful work of, of multiplying his people and expanding his kingdom by people that are committed to these gospel communities and living it out in the real world. I guess as we've uh, talked and dreamed about sanctuary, um, one of the things that I think really stirs in my heart is just meeting the needs of people here in Fremont, the, the maybe the people on the outskirts of that wouldn't walk into necessarily any church, but that maybe they would find um, a home and a place at sanctuary. Um, just the the, the least and the lost, those that that need needs, maybe a coat or school supplies, but that we could love well um, and and show them the love of Jesus. 
So I guess for me, I hope that as we start Sanctuary, and if it's 15, 20 years, that's still where our heart is, is to really, how can we um, love those that, that really need it. The name Sanctuary for me comes from the story in Exodus 25 where the tabernacle is beginning to be described. And, and God says to Moses in verse 8 in Exodus 25, He says, Let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell with them. And I just love that image of God initiating this way of life with His people through this leader Moses. And He says, Go construct a sanctuary for me that I might dwell with them. And so the sanctuary is all about God and His presence and what He's going to do and these people being so caught up in that that it transforms everything they'll ever go through. And so I love that image of sanctuary. So that's really what the name is rooted in. But if you think about it from a, a, a world, a perspective the world would understand and think through when they first hear it, I think of a wildlife sanctuary. And so when I think of a wildlife sanctuary, I think of like an eagle that's been that's been wounded or is sick and somebody finds it and they bring it to this place that they're going to care for this animal. But the whole time they're going to care for it is with the intent of sending it back in the world to be an eagle in the world again. And I, there's so much richness in that for me just in the name sanctuary of being a people that are simply rooted in the presence of God and desiring that He do whatever it is and being this safe place where people, other people can come and experience that same presence and transform who they are and invite them into this good life that God offers and, and this other perspective of this, this sanctuary of being a healing place. And, but, but again, with the intent of sending back into the world to fulfill its purpose that it was created to be. The church was created out of the glory and unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God's people, saved and commissioned through His Son and empowered by His Spirit. God created a miraculous community around the living message and witness of a living Jesus. And through it, through them, He expressed Himself and worked His mission of rescue and transformation. That first community in Acts, and every reproducing gospel community since, has had the DNA of miraculous love, of supernatural unity, of singular eternal focus and purpose, and God-glorifying health and growth. Around the world, here in the U.S., in our central district, the MB family is many church families, gospel communities, who exist in power, love, unity, witness, focus, fruit of the multiplication of that first community of disciples, who became the church at Pentecost, with thousands of cultural years and geographic miles apart from that first family. But our connection is, or can be, pure and strong. The heart of our commission is our genuine heart obedience to our command, loving God and each other. A hurting or divided church will need to devote its full heart, soul, mind, and strength to restoring the unified love of God and each other and all church families should be supporting that church's restoration and renewal. A growing, energized church will need just as much, at times even more, devotion to that same God and neighbor love, if they're to avoid drift and decay. That too needs to be the shared responsibility of the entire extended church family. The growth of the church through the church, by some winsome drawing or courageous going, or even violent scattering, has always carried a spirit-created likeness to Jesus, grace and truth, sacrificial giving and humble, grateful receiving, struggle and perseverance, life and health, radiant purity and the ongoing purifying of ordinary people made extraordinary by the one true redeeming God. Our family of churches, our central district, embodies the command to love and the commission to make disciples. We are church plants, we are long existing churches. We are reproducing and renewing and rescuing. And we are together, one family, one Lord, one mission, transformed lives.